All right, so we left off before um, in terms of drawing uh, drawing organic structures and basically going from a complete structure to a condensed structure, a condensed structure back to a complete structure. And this topic here is going to be a different way of drawing um, organic structures, and these are called skeletal stru skeletal stru structures. Um, the skeletal structures are basically a convenient way, like almost like a shorthand notation way of um, drawing chemical structures. So for instance, um, if you look at this, to you, that might look like a square. Um, that's also a chemical structure, believe it or not. Um, and the idea is that whenever you have these lines, you assume that there's a carbon atom at the junction of any two lines. So basically, um, whoops. if I were to look here, there's going to be a carbon, there's going to be a carbon, there's going to be a carbon, and there's going to be a carbon. So anywhere where two lines come together, there's going to be a carbon. So that one would have four carbons, four carbons. All right. Um, and then you also assume that there's going to be hydrogens around every carbon to give that carbon a total of four bonds. So remember, carbons always have four bonds. So for instance, in each of these circled carbons that we have here, so there's already two bonds. So if you look at this carbon right there, right? So that carbon has one bond to the carbon beneath it and one carbon to the carbon to the right of it, right? So that's two bonds. So you would also say that there would be two H's attached to that one as well. So in addition, um, to the four carbons total in the molecule, each of the carbons would have two hydrogens attached to it. So there's going to be two hydrogens there, two hydrogens there, two hydrogens there, and two hydrogens there. So overall, this structure would be C4H8, right? Four carbons, eight hydrogens. Um, now, they're not always going to be squares or shapes like that. You could also look at something I'm going to come down to the bottom of the screen now, right? So just kind of a, a zigzag line like that. So in addition to saying that there's carbons at the junction of any two lines, you can also say there's carbons at the end of a line. So at the end of the line, there's going to be a carbon. So that one that I drew, I can also come over here and say, okay, at the end of the line, there's going to be a carbon. At the junction of the two lines, there's going to be a carbon. And then at the end of the other line, there's going to be a carbon, right? So now we also, again, have to assume that there are enough hydrogens around each carbon to give it four bonds. So this one down here would have a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and another hydrogen. This carbon would have, it has two bonds already. So now it has a total of four bonds because I drew in two more. This last carbon here, right now it has one bond, so it needs three more, so it has a total of four bonds, okay? So this was going from a, a skeletal structure, whoops, sorry. This one's going from a skeletal structure would look like that, and this one over here would be a complete structure. And again, you could also write this as a condensed structure where you would just write, um, I'll draw it over here, this a condensed would be CH3, CH2, CH3. All right. So again, different ways to write the different um, the different structures. And you should be familiar with all of these, the complete, the condensed, and the skeletal. All right. So this is just showing the same thing I just uh, drew. The skeletal structure basically takes out all of the individual um, bond lines between the carbons and the hydrogens, and you basically assume that they're there. And you also take out all the letters, and we assume that at the junction of any two lines, there's going to be a carbon. 
and that there's enough carbon, or sorry, there's enough hydrogens attached to each carbon to give it a total of four bonds. So, right, there is a junction that's going to be a carbon. That carbon has two lines coming from it, so that's two bonds. It would have the two extra bonds that would be the hydrogen. Uh, if you have a heteroatom, so remember a heteroatom is something other than a carbon or a hydrogen. So if you have, say, an oxygen, that's your heteroatom. Anytime you have a heteroatom when you're drawing skeletal structures, you draw them in. So in this case, you draw in the bond from the carbon to the oxygen, which is shown here, right? So you draw in that bond from the carbon to the oxygen, and then you also have to include any hydrogens attached to that heteroatom. So usually we don't draw H's. So for instance, this H or that H, for instance, are not drawn in. This one that's circled, we do have to draw in because it's attached to a heteroatom. So hydrogens attached to carbons don't get drawn in. Hydrogens attached to a heteroatom such as an oxygen or a nitrogen, do get drawn in. Okay, so what is the chemical formula of this thing? So remember, chemical formula, like a chemical formula for water would be H2O. So a chemical formula for this is going to be so many carbons and so many hydrogens, because in looking at it, we see it's a line. And we also can see that there's nothing else, there's no heteroatoms present. So we know that this structure has to be only carbons and hydrogens. So we basically count, right? So that's gonna be a carbon, that's gonna be a carbon. Carbon, 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 carbon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be carbon, eight. And now the question is how many hydrogens do we have? So we're going to, Let's go carbon by carbon and count. So this first carbon, we see it only has one line to it. So that means that in order for it to have a total of four bonds, it has to have three hydrogens on it. This next one here has two bonds already attached, which means it has to have two more bonds in order to give it four. This one's gonna have to have two, 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 and then at the end is going to be three again. And this is a very common pattern where you see the carbons at the end of these linear structures have three hydrogens and the ones in the middle have two. You can't have a carbon with three hydrogens in the middle of the structure. So if we add all of that up, we're gonna have C8, H18. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, plus three is 15, plus another three is 18. So C8H18.